Hello, my name is David Kersley, a certified SOLIDWORKS application engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, we will create a putter by using custom templates, global variables, sketch contours, and shortcut toolbars. So let's get to it. We're going to pick on the new, and when we pick on new, it's going to open up our document, the new SOLIDWORKS document. And you'll notice if I pick on uh, these uh, templates that I've created, this one's called car frame. You can see that there's a preview over here of what's going on, what's in that file. There's one for golf ball, and I've got several putters. I'm going to pick on this one, and this one says putter-ts-amfb inch, and that stands for triplane sole, uh, arced mid body, and flat bumpers and inch units, and it's a putter. So let's pick on OK. And when we open this file, we're going to see that there's three sketches. One's for the face profile. One's for the body profile, one's for the center cavity. It looks like there's an axis and a lofted plane. We'll get into those here in just a second. But if I pick on the face uh, profile sketch, and I just open that sketch up, um, we did another uh, video on uh, creating templates with global variables. And you'll notice that there's a red E out to the left of each one of these. And each, that doesn't mean there's an error. Don't panic. It just means that there's an equation or a global variable uh, set up with this little summation symbol. So. I'm going to exit out of this sketch, and if I go over to my equations, I'm going to manage my equations, and, and we've done this before, and this is where we set our global variables. In this case, I've set them for face width, face height, the depth, uh, top line thickness, uh, all, all, all the variables and dimensions I need to create this putter are already right here. So let's click OK. And when we do, we're going to start out by uh, wanting to utilize our shortcut key bar. And when you get your SOLIDWORKS, you can program in these shortcuts. So uh, a couple ways to access it. One way is to right click kind of up here in the white space and hit customize. Or you can click on SOLIDWORKS add-ins and hit customize. There's just two of the ways. And you get these toolbars, shortcut bars, commands, uh, menus, keyboards, mouse gestures, and customizations. We're going to play around with shortcut uh, bars. And you'll notice that this one's for parts. This one says assemblies, and it says assembly here, drawings, and sketches. And anything that I want to add to it at the part level or whatever, I can. And I have other toolbars under here. Uh, maybe I want features. And if I look under features, maybe I want to add one of these features, um, instant 3D, or maybe I want to do recognize feature or something like that, or convert to mesh body. And it, let's say I was going to use that quite a bit, or I wanted to use 3D texture. If I hold down my left mouse button, I just drag and drop. You'll notice there's a little plus sign, and there you go. I've added that to my parts shortcut uh, toolbar. So if I'm using this frequently, yeah, it makes sense to just go ahead and access it real quick. And then I'm not searching. Again, we don't want that dead time of your mouse traveling across the screen. So uh, the other thing I'm going to focus on is keyboard. And when I click on keyboard, I can do I can print this list. And if I pick on shortcuts and I scroll down, in my SOLIDWORKS, it came with shortcut bar is already pre-programmed to the letter S. And you can pre-program these or can pro, uh, program these however you want. Um, and, and this is where you would do that. So we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to look at this original sketch here. So I'm going to pick on this face profile. I'm going to my mouse over into space, just kind of on the white space there. I'm going to hit the S key. And when I do, I can access the sketch. Do I want to do an extrude boss base? And, you know, SOLIDWORKS is doing a real good job of enhancements to show you exactly what this feature does. So I'm going to pick on uh, extrude boss base. And for my distance, I'm going to uh, look and see that I can see that that arrow is pushing this way. I actually want to reverse that direction. So now I'm pushing over to the, to the right side of my screen here. For my distance, I'm actually going to hit the equals. And I'm going to assign it a global variable. And we're going to do top line thickness. And if, if I hit my green check here, notice that nothing happens. I get this little error. It says sketch contains one, uh, more than one open contour. And, and what that's telling us is it doesn't know exactly uh, what to extrude. So uh, say, OK, OK, I heard you. I heard you both times. And over here where it says selected contours, I'm going to pick here. And I'm just going to pick this outer profile. And when I pick this outer profile, notice that it's now pushing to this global variable here, 0.6. It's in the direction we want, and it's just taking that profile. So let's hit the green check now. Bam, no errors. So that's cool. No warnings, no, hey, you got open contours. Well, here's what's really cool. So you may notice this. 
is over here on the left side in my feature tree, you'll notice that there's this little symbol. And somebody at 3D Experience World said, hey, Dave, what's that uh, dead fish symbol? And that's not really a dead fish symbol. Uh, I wish I could kind of unsee that, but it's actually just means that there's more than one contour inside of this original sketch. And so if I pick on face profile, highlight it, and move my mouse over, I'm going to hit the S key. And again, as I hover over these things, I've got extrude boss base, draft, revolve, wrap, or patterns. I'm going to pick on extrude boss base. And again, I'm going to change a few things up. I actually want this sketch to start from this face. So I'm going to hit surface, face, or plane. I'm going to pick this surface. I'm going to reverse my direction for my thickness. I'm going to hit equal, global variable, uh, my mid-body, uh, and then for my profile, I'm going to pick this one, these two profiles here. And what they're doing is they're extruding this 0 0.430 from this green surface towards the back, and we're starting to build the mid-body of this putter. And this is called an arced mid-body. You can see the arc on the back. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to take this sketch here, another fully defined sketch, and if I pick on it, I'm going to hit my S key. Again, my shortcut key is keeping me from going up and around, picking on surfaces, going to find that icon. I've already pre-programmed in here to extrude surfaces. So now I'm just going to type this one into 2.4. Uh, let's do a mid-body or mid-plane, and I'm going to hit my green check. Now. I'm going to go back and I want to extrude this region here. And this is called the bumper region. And so I'm going to go back to this original face profile sketch. I'm going to hit the S key. And I'm going to go do an extrude boss base from where this sketch plane, from where we started. The original sketch plane is fine. Blind, the direction is fine. But I actually want to do up the surface. So I can do a couple things. If I believe I just double click on here. If I pick on that, will it double click it? Nope. So let's pick on up the surface. Uh, let's And now this is highlighted. Let's grab this surface. And again, if I hit go ahead and extrude, it doesn't know what contour. So we're just going to pick the bumper region. And when I do, you get a preview of how this is now extruding up to this uh, surface here. So we're going to hit a green check. Uh, one thing we're going to do is we're going to hide this sketch. And there you go. Our putter is starting to look uh, pretty good. So uh, another thing that you can do in your templates, and in, uh, you can start the predefined views. Now, if I look at this sketch or this putter, I pretend the golf ball's here and the cup is somewhere over here on the left side of our screen, I start to see everything in a very vertical and very horizontal manner. So I want to do something where I start to push the golfer's eyes towards the front uh, of the golf ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the S key here. And I'm not in a sketch. It's not highlighted. But I'm going to go access my draft command. And I'm going to do a neutral plane. Uh, I'm going to clear this out. My neutral plane is going to be this surface here. And I'm going to draft this top surface here about 22 and a half degrees. And this is all manufacturer dependent. Uh, so some like 22 and a half, some like 30, it could be 20 degrees. It just depends on what you want this to look like. Um, once I've drafted this guy and I go back to this address position, you'll notice that I've got two little breaks right here where it's drafting these two surfaces. But if you follow those two out, it's kind of creating a little bit of an arrow. And so what I'm doing is I'm helping to push the golfer's eye towards the front of the golf ball, the imaginary golf ball that's sitting here. Now, what I want to do next is I want to take this sketch called Center Cavity. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to hit the S key. And we've been extruding at this point, but we can also do things, extrude cut. And when I do my extrude cut, it's wanting to come from that original sketch plane. Uh, we could absolutely do that. Uh, and, you know, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. However, on this one, I'm just going to pick this back face. And we're going to start it from here. We're going to reverse our direction, and we're going to do an offset from surface and we're going to pick this this surface here and we're going to make this guy somewhere around I don't know let's make it a uh, 45,000 not 450 but uh, 0.045 and it's about 45,000 deep but you can see here in the preview that it's actually not intersecting this top line and so what we want to do is reverse and so what we're doing is we're taking weight out of the putter 
And we're helping balance the center of gravity as, as close to center as possible. And the next thing that we would have to do at this point is start adding some fillets to it and start softening this guy up. However, one thing we want to do is we want to put some loft on here. So I've created an axis and then I created a, a lofted plane uh, that's at three degrees or 87 degrees from horizontal, three degrees from vertical. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on this plane. I'm going to hit my S key, my shortcut key. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look for extruded surface. And I've got one right here called cut with surface. I'm going to pick it and I'm going to pick my plane. And notice that this arrow is sitting right here. And this arrow tells me everything that is on this side of the plane, we're going to cut away. And I don't want that. I just want to remove this side. And what I'm doing is I'm actually creating lofts because most people don't realize there's actually somewhere between one to three degrees of loft actually built into butter. And the reason that loft is there is the ball, imagine it sits on the blade of grass, it actually pushes the blades of grass down. And we want to get enough loft where when the putter makes contact with it, the ball gets out of that dimple and is not flying or skidding through the air too long, but it's actually getting onto the ground and rolling at a top spin. And I'm going to hide a couple sketches here while I'm talking. And so what we want to do next is we want to uh, add a hosel to this, this top line here. And we want to add a hosel, and we're going to just make a, a couple configurations real quick so that we can begin to run simulation on it. And so this will set us up for success when we run simulation. So I'm going to look at this from the top view, and I'm going to pick on this guy. I'm going to hit sketch, um, hit my S button. There's my circle, and I'm just going to draw him in. I'm hit my escape key, and, and, and what I want to do now is I'll put a relationship between the center here in the midpoint of this line, let's make them both horizontal to each other. And let's see, do I have dimension already plugged in here somewhere? Uh, there it is. And so let's put a dimension from the center there to the origin there. And we're just going to leave it at 947 there. And so um, the next thing that needs to happen is we're going to put a diameter on this guy. And I'm going to use this as a global variable here. And I'm going to hit equal global variable. And I'm looking for a hosel post diameter. Uh, so let's go to that one. And we're going to pick green check OK. And the next thing we want to do is I'm going to hit S key again. Again, my shortcut key. I'm going to hit down here. There's my extrude bus base. So I added extrude base not only at the part level, but at the sketch level. And so now when I do extrude boss base and I rotate this guy around, I'm going to grab over here and say, what's my length? I'm going to hit e equals global variable. And I think we did something like a hosel post length. Uh, one inch, I'm gonna hit my green check. And there's my hosel post. Uh, the only thing that's not really happening at this point is I wanna make some configurations of this hosel. So if I double pick it, I've got this 947 dimension access. So if I pick on that dimension and right click it, I can do config. This puts me into a configuration manager and there's the default. I'm going to leave default alone. Just one of my little superstitions. You could overwrite it, rename it 892. And I'm going to call this one 0.892. And what that does is based on the type of hosel, a shaft that's going to go over this hosel, uh, 892 is going to put the center line of the shaft through the center of the head. And I'm going to do 1.250. And I'm going to set this to 1.250. This is going to allow the, this is where the dimension is going to change to in our configurations. And we're going to name this configs with an S, maybe. And I'm going to save it. So I save this um, uh, configuration uh, table here. I'm going to hit Apply, and I'm going to hit OK. And when I do, I can now go to my Configurations Manager. There's the first, there's our original hosel position. There's position one, which is putting the center line of the hosel through the center line of the shaft, uh, the center of the head. And then this one is 1.250. And this is pushing the center, the C, the, the hosel very heelward. This is for someone making a very arced stroke. So the toe, toe of the putter imagines rotating. I'm not sure I can get it to rotate, but the toe is rotating in a radial position pretty quick. So the CG gets pushed a little heelward. So uh, I hope this helps you guys out and, and you, you learned a little bit along the way. Uh, this has been David Kersley with Go Engineer. I hope you found this SolidWorks tutorial helpful. Please check out Go Engineers YouTube library or visit our website to enroll in classes near you at goengineer.com.